The Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs Portfolio Committee in Gauteng, which also, by the way, incorporates research and development, has been meeting with eight municipalities this week in an effort to address problems around electricity, water, and infrastructure provision. Uh, the meetings follow Premier Panyaza Lesufi's State of the Province Address delivered on Monday, where he delivered many plans to deal with service delivery problems. Fasia Hassan is a member of the provincial legislature and chairs uh, this very committee. Fasia, very good evening to you. Thank you for coming in. So, this was quite a large set of meetings yeah. that you had. What did you identify as the main issues? Three main issues that we called municipalities and metros to talk to. The first is electricity. You can't have a conversation without that. Water, another big crisis, and infrastructure. Um, I think those three really sum up. They're not the only problems, but they sum up the crisis uh, that we're experiencing on a local government level. So, yes, it was very extensive. We called every single municipality every single metro um, and we really interrogated them on the plans that they have um, on those three different elements and also very importantly what we need to do to support them and the problems are so commonplace you think of an area like Hamans Kral, yeah. massive water problem for years Soweto there's the still unsettled issue around electricity is it load reduction is it uh, cable yeah. theft that's causing an issue you go to Midval, uh, not Midval, you go to an area like Mfuleni, but it's completely filthy and people are saying nothing is happening. How do you even then begin to take what, what people mm -hmm. tell you in these interactions yes. and flip it into actual change? Yeah. So each municipality, even though the issues are quite similar, they do require slightly different interventions. Uh, the kind of intervention you're going to do in a city of Tswane, which is also in financial crisis, and I know in my constituencies, they're barely doing any work. Um, the, that kind of intervention is very different to an intervention in Mfuleni. Some of it is legislative, but more of it is about sitting down with the municipality and saying, right, do we need to get you another conditional grant from Treasury? Is the issue, and it very often is, capacity? Um, is it uh, political instability in coalitions? Um, is it just basic service delivery matters, etc., etc.? And that was really the intention of yesterday is actually it was a 12 to 14 hour meeting because now what we're going to do is go into each of those municipalities in metros with the right kinds of interventions in the hope um, that as provincial provincial government but more provincial legislature uh, we can really push them um, mm -hmm. to, to have some positive outcomes I mean we all need some good news so you mentioned capacity uh, as an, a recurring issue yeah. is it that people are not are incompetent not willing to do the work or departments are so understaffed that even the people who want to work are unable to meet mm. the daily tasks because there's simply so much to do. Mm. It's a combination of all of that. Uh, one of the things M. Fuleni, for example, told us is that the technical team that runs parts of the water, electricity, infrastructure, etc., they just don't have a lot of or enough technical services. Um, and the reason is they have a very high turnover rate. Um, so it's not just about attracting talent. It's about how do we keep talent in the public service. And I'd say that's a much more structural issue that oversees uh, or rather supersedes just Gauteng as well. Mm. But people will say to you, well, they don't stay in the municipality too long because if you're going to move up the ranks, mm. park the fact that you're overworked. If you hope to move up the ranks and you're not politically connected, mm. you're stuck in a dead-end job. Mm. So that would have to be part of the intervention. So, yes, but there is already a new piece of legislation that's been passed in National Assembly that actually deals with the political affiliation um, of the civil service. And let's also be quite clear, the civil service must be professional. Um, it must have the capacity and it must exist outside of political parties. So, for example, in the city of Tswane, new mayor, who knows, no MMCs, etc. The public service and service delivery can't stop because there's a different political leadership. Mm. And that's something that we really, really, really have to focus on. But park the day to day. I mean, even the Auditor General's office has flagged yes. this. Something to do with, for example, the skills of someone as high up as a municipal manager. Yeah. Now, if at that level people are being led by someone who's out of their depth because they're a political deployee or, what it, or their skill set it has become outdated in present-day South Africa, what hope is there that we can fix floating municipalities? Mm. I think there is a lot of hope. In fact, we have no other choice but to fix our municipalities and turn them around. Um, in many ways, local government is where the tire hits the tar. Um, and I've even pulled out some of the audit reports and all mm. of those things. Look, it's not a pretty picture in a number of places. Um, I've just pulled out the city of Twana, of course, is top of our mind uh, because of the political instability. Uh, but they're not the only ones who are having problematic uh, audit outcomes and findings, etc., etc. So the question is, can we turn it around? We have to, and yes, we can, for a number of reasons. Um, the first is that we need to attract the right kind of talent. We need to pass the right kinds of legislations and frameworks, but also we need to give municipalities two, two elements, space to work, 
but where they are failing, bring in the right kinds of interventions. So one of the things we're also looking at is bringing in experts around water and energy to say to municipalities, now that you are able to independently produ uh, produce power, how can you do that in a way that is benefiting the working class, um, that really ensures that the poorest of the poor are mm. not left behind, as an example. So those are all uh, impressive plans, interventions to suggest, but how do they help someone who wants uh, clean tap water yeah. tomorrow, someone who wants to have uninterrupted power supply, barring load shedding, yeah. but just the other issues that happen at municipal level that mess with one's ability to switch on the light when they yeah. get home to make supper. So municipalities are struggling with the basic day-to-days. I think there's no doubt, nobody can deny that, no one can run away from that. Um, but I think there must be some hope in that there's serious interventions happening. Yesterday we sat with Brandwater, we've also got meetings with ESCOM. Um, I think the minister was very clear, that's the minister of finance, um, in some of that debt relief that's going to be targeting municipalities. So there is some real big interventions. The question now comes in, and it's exactly what you said, how do we change the lives of people on the ground? Is it going to happen tomorrow? I can't say that for sure, but what I can say is that in the near future, we are going to not just press our thumb to the issue. Mm. Um, as, a, as a public representative, as a chairperson of a portfolio, and I was very clear about this, yesterday we actually sent City of Johannesburg packing, and we sent the City of Ikuruleni packing, uh, because we didn't feel like they had the sufficient kind of uh, detail that we were looking for. So you're also seeing a change in how oversight is happening. You're seeing a Why more didn't harsh they have the detail? There's some debate. There's an argument that they didn't know what was required. Uh, I'm saying that because that's what they said. Uh, but uh, other municipalities were able to present on the level of detail we were expecting. So they I think know that's important to say. What was required because they don't know what they're doing or because your brief wasn't clear? That's where the question was. But regardless, we've called them back. And I actually have been very clear. And we as the portfolio committee have said um, it's not sufficient for Metro to come, not have their story straight, and ultimately say, well, Here's a very, I mean, a slide, slideshow of 18 or 19 slides when the issue is so much bigger. So um, the process will be ongoing, and mm -hmm. perhaps we can have a follow-up where we can really nitty-gritty say in each municipality, this is what we're pushing them to do, because ultimately that's what this is about. Absolutely necessary. Finally, your portfolio also encompasses the issue of eGov. Yes. Um, still a very lofty idea in South Africa when you consider the fact that, first of all, n ha not even half the population has access to yep. Wi-Fi or Internet services. At, the fin at their fingertips. Yeah. So how do we even move government online yeah. predominantly when people, even if you do have Wi-Fi, there's it's ESCOM that's going to switch you off sure. for 10 to 12 sure. hours. Sure. So Gauteng is the only province in the country um, that has a portfolio committee that uh, does eGov. Um, I agree, we have major problems and they are bread and butter issues. At the same time, we can't let that prevent uh, the advancement of government. I mean, how many of us are tired of standing in lines? I mean, I said to you earlier, there should be an app. We should be able to get everything we want uh, from home affairs to a health care system um, to social development, etc. Everything should be in the future the um, more accessible, right? But that doesn't take away from what you've said. We have to get the bread and butter issues done first. Um, and perhaps for all of my sins, um, I have both of those things to, to, to cover. But it is very important that we don't drop the ball on either side. We'll track how well you cover it all for Siha San. Thank you so much for coming in. Chairperson of the uh, Khouti and Corporative Governance and Traditional Affairs Portfolio Committee.